love of going on stage or of creating something sure. you know and you think about the one thing that's the most satisfying you know outside of childbirth and in having your own children is creating you know people who don't create things i think as a whole are way less happy than people who do create things yeah. i mean i know dudes that make pool cues i know dudes that make belts they make custom wallets and there's a something that they get when they look like you know i bought a wallet from this dude and you you buy a wallet from him and he sells you the wallet and he made it for you and shit like there's a smile that he has like he created something yeah. he created a piece of artwork and someone else is appreciating it wow i love how you did this, this is wow this is awesome work it's so clean and well done he's like thank you and like his effort and his his creativity have gone into an actual object and to us that's very 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 satisfying and then there's the comedy satisfaction that you get for performing I mean that's all we, you and I understand I mean yeah. we understand I guess it's in music it's probably just the same thing you, you create a song and then people love that song that's feeling creating something then when what are you doing when you're creating something well you're doing the same fucking thing you're you're pushing the machine you're pushing it in your way and your way is making people happy and and giving people some positive energy well, yeah, and, and also, then they buy your DVD and there's an industry behind that and they come see you at the clubs and there's, there's industry behind that even behind putting gas in their cars and you know it's 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 a really it's amazing how many different pieces are in place if you, if you if you take back if you like you know zoom in on the idea of what is creation and creation is taking something from the nothingness and bringing it into the somethingness. And so you sort of become the doorway for something to come from the nothingness into the somethingness. So when you're creating, you're actually experiencing a flow through from the infinite into the finite. And that I think that is the feeling that we love so much is that sense of feeling that that thing when you're working on jokes and all of a sudden it goes from being a drudge to all of a sudden it's like, holy shit you know it's happening and all of a sudden right. you get sucked into this weird vacuum and, and you you've written for like two hours and it feels like a second you know that that sense of being pulled into a momentary current where something's coming out of you that's clearly not necessarily you that to me is like one of the ultimate it is it's the ultimate feeling and i i have a, the you know i think if you go by this idea of this attractor that, that, that McKenna talks about or this thing that exists in hyperspace that it's it wants to come through us into this universe it wants to express itself through us and um, I, th I think that's the compulsion that you're talking about I think that's an alternative viewpoint obviously um, there's a, the cynical way of looking at it like no 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 it's a natural inclination that people have monkeys are curious this is what we do <laughs> yeah. we think about things and every joke that you have is just, just accumulation of your life experiences yeah. and you're figuring out a little bit congratulations that guy's right? a dick. you're not tapping into the universal consciousness we'll be fuck. right back Sarah Palin's on the yeah. line and we're gonna have a nice little sit down really with good. the future president of the United States maybe huh Who yeah knows? well let's hope he doesn't fuck anybody that he's not married to by imaginary rituals. Uh, you, the, the thing about it but is... But you know what I'm saying? The, the, that cynical point of view about uh, the idea of creativity. Um, yeah. There's something to that point of view, too. You have to address it. You can't always go hippie. And um, one That's, of the things I, that I... I, don't, I, don't I, ba I bounce back and forth. I don't think it is either, but it is a little. Um, I, bounce, I bounce back and forth with the idea of the imagination being uh, uh, almost like... Like when you when you have imagination, the imagination is the real force behind the the evolution. What imagination truly is is we think of it as like, oh, I can see things, I can work around problems, I have this idea. But when you imagine an idea, when you imagine a product, you imagine how to d d design an engine for a car, and you're the you know you're Henry Ford or whoever the fuck made the first engine. Yeah. When your your imagination has this idea for this thing, and then you build it and design it, and boom, it's there. That thought what there there was no thought of that before it existed it's not that people were running around thinking of the car and yeah. i know what's going to look like there was no thought of it you created this or it came to you there's a something from nothing something from from what is that from the ether something from these even if it's just these synapses firing in your mind where is the, what is the signal what is the root of this signal to be so you know mathematical about it and say well it's just human ingenuity and that's what it is it's good old stick to itiveness and you roll up your sleeves and you figure out this world well that Henry Ford created a great thing and you know who else did and Thomas Edison he was a great fellow he invented Get a bunch those of neurons sweating yeah you know 
I don't necessarily know. It's, it is possible that the imagination is something that is information that is out there, like the, the idea of the Akashic records, the idea of, uh, you know, yeah. that there's shit out there, and then what we are is little antennas. Tuning in. Yeah, and that our, when we tune into something, if we...